Um, I myself am a very big fan of D. Watkins and also Jason Reynolds. Um, in fact, have some books of his that I, I read to my son and my son and I read together. Um, so I'm super excited to be here and sharing some of this music. Um, we are here to do two pieces. Um, one piece is an original, uh, which is the first song that we're going to do, and it's called Bread Over Bullets. And the second is a cover by one of my favorite, 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 favorite artists, um, Miss Nina Simone. Um, and we are, <laughs> yep, Josh's Porch to City Lit. Um, we're we're going to be performing um, I Wish I Knew How It Feels to Be Free. Um, so we are going to uh, jump right into it and hope that you all enjoy these pieces. Oh, before I start, I'm Jasmine Pope, and I'm also here with J. Cole Haas, an amazing guitar player. Uh, we're both here from Baltimore, um, and we are with J. Pope in the here now. Sacrifices life for a bullet, not brand, not wood, a bit of bullet. Desperation's the trigger. What would make a man sacrifice his life for a bullet? Not bread, not water, but a bullet. Desperation's the trigger. Watch him pull it, watch him pull it, watch him pull it. Watch him pull it, pull it. Hey, hey, hey. Watch him pull it, watch him pull it, watch him pull it. Let's speed it up. Watch him pull it, pull it. Hey, hey, hey. Desperado, sons of ship in the bottle, his winds at full throttle, his sails are on hollow, he's living without a motto, praise it won't be long, hope his seas don't follow his path, he hustles on the strip that they'll get that, daddy took his pride back, he ate the bullet so maybe his son asleep at night, with a belly full of water and bread, he'd rather die like a man and live like he's dead, so his young one won't choose the way of the gun, whenever the time comes he'll remember where he's from, whenever the time comes he'll remember who he's from, He'll remember who he's from, he'll be like, no, I will not choose bullets over bread, he'll say no, I will not choose bullets over bread, he'll say no. I will not choose bullets over bread, bullets over bread, I'd rather leave, but sometimes I wonder what we're living for, I wonder what we're living for, what would make a woman sacrifice her life? For a bullet, not bread, not water, but a bullet. Desperation's the trigger. What would make a woman sacrifice her life for a bullet? Not bread, not water, but a bullet. Desperation's the trigger. Watch a bullet. Said, watch a bullet. Oh. Watch her pull it, watch her pull it, please don't make her, make her pull that trigger, no. Coming up rough on the right side of town, always had a penny in the pocket and a smile, always broke a heart if it came within a mile and an inch of this, 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 this. Pretty little picture that she painted and slaves to maintain it. She prays it ain't tainted. The saints might take it, the demons might break it. They hate it cause it's sacred. They hate that they ain't make it, so they just circle and waiting. But no, she sees this very clearly. She will not be falling. She'll be dancing in the morning. When they come calling, she'll say no. I will not choose bullets over bread, no, 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 
helps you say no 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 i will not choose bullets over bread bullets over bread she'll say no i will not choose bullets over bread bullets over bread she'll say no rather leave but sometimes I wonder what I'm living for I do sometimes I wonder what I'm fighting for I do sometimes I wonder what I'm living for I do I wonder I wonder I do wonder, wonder, wonder. I wonder, wonder, wonder. I do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the virtual snaps and claps. <laughs> <laughs> um, this next piece that we're gonna do is a piece by Nina Simone called I Wish I Knew um, How It Would Feel To Be Free. I wish I knew how it would feel to be free. I wish that I could break all the chains holding me. I wish that I could say all the things that I should say. Say them loud, say them clear for the whole wide world. that I could share all the love in my heart remove all the bars that are keeping us apart I wish that you could know what it means to be me then you see and agree every man should be that I could give all I'm longing to give. I wish that I could live like I'm longing to live. I wish that I could do all the things that I can do. And though I'm way overdue, I'll be starting I wish that I could be all like a bird in the sky. How sweet it would be if I found out I could fly. I'd soar to the sun and look down on the sea. Then I'd sing, cause I know. Then I'd sing, cause I know. Yeah. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. I'm going to move over so the sun is out of my face. <laughs> We really appreciate being here. This was amazing. Um, and thank you so much for having us. Oh, thank you for having, thank you for joining us. Um, that song brought back so many, many memories. I was just singing along with you. We just stirred up all Nina Simone. <laughs> good, perfect. perfect. <laughs> well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to City Lit's 2021 Dombach Award Ceremony. My name is Carla Dupre, the Executive Director of City Lit Project. Before we continue tonight's program, can we just show big love for our musical guest artist, J Pope, and the Here Now? Can we just clap it up for them, please? I stand amazed at the many treasured and inspiring musical artists we have in Baltimore and this region. It feels like a best kept secret you want to let out of the bag every single time. Thank you, J Pope, and the Here Now. Folks, please be sure to support them by their albums. They are a must see when venues open up. We'll put their website address in the chat and make it easy for you to follow them. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, an evening where we get to celebrate literature and its impact. We get to champion not one, but in so many ways, two literary heroes, our honored guest Dee Watkins and our founding board chair Chick Dunbach, for which this award was named. First, I'd like to give a special shout out to our remarkable City Lit board members, Danis Harris, Dana Harris Travato, our chair. Can you guys wave? Brian Lyles, our immediate past chair, Chelsea Fetzer, our vice chair, and Aditya Desai, our secretary. Bunky Marker, our treasurer, could not be with us tonight. I'd also like to give a special recognition to our leadership council, which includes City Lit founder emeritus Greg Wilhelm, who's in the house tonight. We have Chick Dombach, who will be introduced shortly, and those unable to join us tonight, Kate Markert. E. Scott Johnson, and Judy Cooper. We have a wonderful and packed schedule tonight. We know by Thursday, many of you are all Zoomed out, but stay with us as there are so many delights this evening. You'll be glad you did. Tonight, we'll learn of the impact of Dee Watkins' work and hear from educators and students who are fortunate to read Dee's books and engage with him as a writer and as a teacher. But more than anything, as a person whose love for the written word compels him to spread that love to our Baltimore youth. Please welcome our city lead chair, Dana Harris Travado, who has the pleasure of introducing Chick and the importance of the Dombach Award. Unmute Dana. Okay, hello everyone. Good evening and thank you for being here. It's my honor to be on the board of City Lit, especially this evening as we sing the praises of two remarkable individuals, Chick Dombach and Dee Watkins. Chick has been an ever-present leader for City Lit over the past 17 years, having served as our first board chair since 2004. As an expert in nonprofit management, he has guided the organization through lean times and helped strengthen City Lit's literary programming on an ongoing basis. Chick has had an extensive international career as a peacemaker, as the head of countless organizations, including the Alliance for Peace Building and the National Peace Corps. He is also involved in Peter Yarrow's Operation Respect. Chick understands the power of organizations to create systemic change and has spent an entire career successfully organizing at both the grassroots and government level to prevent violence and promote conflict resolution in war-torn countries throughout the world. His fervent belief in negotiation and willingness to work hard to build trust among adversaries has enabled him to help broker peace in such areas as Ethiopia, Eritrea, and the Congo, among others. In 2017, Chick was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize and recently, he was declared a Knight of the National Order of Mali. An award-winning professor, speaker, writer, and athlete, you can learn all about him in his phenomenal memoir, Exhaust the Limits, The Life and Times of a Global Peacemaker. I could go on and on about Chick's extraordinary life, but one of the things I'm most impressed with is Chick's unfailing commitment to always show up. 
even though he's busy throughout the world and active with numerous organizations and universities, Chick always shows up. He's ever available to share his knowledge, offer support, and use his voice to expand literary opportunities in Baltimore and beyond. In this way, Chick is not unlike Dee Watkins, our Dombach Award winner tonight. Dee too is ever committed to hearing, guiding, and being available to Baltimore's youth. Both Chick and Dee have an unwavering, tenacious belief in human relationships and the power of listening and listening to people to increase understanding, promote empathy, and to create change. I am grateful to know them and learn from them. And with that, Chick, I turn the program over to you. Thank you so much, Dana. I can't tell you how much I appreciate uh, your, your kind words. And I miss seeing you and other friends at uh, the board meetings. You guys are just such a terrific group. And I was just so proud and pleased to be a part of it for many, many years and to still be connected with it. And special thanks, of course, to Carla, who had the enormous task of replacing her founder and leader, Greg Wilhelm. Uh, you've done it masterfully, and we appreciate it. I was surprised and overwhelmed in 2014. I, I was returning on a from a trip to Africa, just in time for a city lit program. And the award was announced. It was a total surprise. It was a, it was a tremendous honor to have my name attached to it. It is all the more special because of the organization it sponsors and because of the recipients, especially this one this year. City lit is special to me because it grew organically from Baltimore's writing and publishing world to give voice to and support for the literary community. I love the mission to nurture the culture of literature. The award recipients over the years have been superstars. Past winners like best-selling writer Kwame Alexander and librarian extraordinaire Judy Cooper, and of course, Greg, were with City Lit from the beginning and they helped make it all possible. These people through City Lit have helped enable writing and publishing and simply the enjoyment of reading to flourish in Baltimore. Many years ago, decades actually, I was the executive director of the National Assembly of Local Arts Agencies, now known as Americans for the Arts. The singer Harry Chapin, famous for his song, his song Cats in the Cradle, was our first keynote speaker. Chapin admonished those of us devoted to the arts to be beacons of society, to express what needs to be expressed, to tell the stories that matter in ways that others will listen and understand. Don't be the dance band on the Titanic diverting attention from impending disaster, he said. Go up into the crow's nest and shout, look out for the icebergs. Everybody who was there remembers that moment and it has guided us ever since. The arts, especially the literary arts, help save lives literally and figuratively. Writers make things better. Dee Watkins, the awardee this year, illustrates what it is all about with his unique honest and powerful writing voice. As we grapple with the issues of race and injustice, Watkins pulls the cover off the scab and exposes us to the harsh realities. He's also a strong advocate for the whole community of writers who shine a bright light on the challenges faced by our communities. He may protest that he's just one voice, but he is a strong voice that cuts to the quick. He's in the crow's nest. On top of that, he makes rating cool. And we appreciate that. Lots of young people have learned to appreciate and enjoy reading because of D. I'm totally proud to have this award go to a young person with so much talent, commitment, and impact. Thank you for what you do, D. Thank you for your voice and for your service to the literary arts. And of course, thanks to all of you who were tuned in this evening for your support for City Lit. We are here because you care. We appreciate it more than you could ever know. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you, Chick. Uh, thank you, Dana. Um, so uh, if you weren't aware of City Lit or weren't familiar with what we do, we've gotten a little bit more about our work and our history. Um, 
you know, this event is, in addition to being a celebration of Dee's writing, is also our annual fundraiser. And so we definitely hope to support and continue it um, uh, going forward. Uh, so, you know, um, something to think about as the night goes on. And I, I wanted to introduce maybe a segment to talk about that impact um, that we're trying to create all over town, right? You know, it's uh, our, our mission statement as a nonprofit is to nurture connections and conversations between writers and readers in the city of Baltimore and the surrounding area. Um, and obviously we're doing that all the time at events like these and other readings and workshops and our presentations and of course the City Lit Festival that we have. Um, but we wanted to take some time to maybe hear from some of the people, some of the readers uh, that Dee's impacted more directly in uh, with his writing and, and the work that he's done. And just kind of give it anecdotal um, story about that. You know, I'm, I'm a teacher myself and I teach writing and the first day of every class of every semester, I usually assign kind of a collection of three or four different essays uh, just to give my students a kind of a, a bit of a, a, a buffet of the different styles and approaches they can take, right? You know, there's different ways to write a story, right? Um, and I mix and match it every semester. You know, I pick things that I'm interested in or things that speak to me or that I think might speak to them. The one essay that is always constant across every semester that I never switch out is D. Watkins' uh, Too Poor for Pop Culture, you know, his, his seminal piece, which you know, was kind of the one that kicked off a lot of things for his career. Um, not only is it the one that never leaves that collection, it's always the one that inevitably becomes the one that my class ends up talking about the most uh, in that first day or that they're most, they're most hungry for and that we get the most out of. Um, so, but you know, th th that's my experience, um, but I would love to share with you some experiences of other people that his work has touched over the years. Um, so if you give me a second, I will be sharing a screen with you real soon. My name is Mr. O, and I am the seventh and eighth grade English teacher at City Springs Elementary Middle School and the 2021 Maryland Teacher of the Year. I've had the opportunity to work with Dee Watkins for the past six years and incorporate his texts into my classroom and into my curriculum. And each year, he's honored our class by coming to visit. And every visit, he leaves our scholars feeling empowered and motivated to do great in their community. And I have one of those amazing scholars here, Isaiah, who's a seventh grader at City Springs and part of our honors program. Isa, I'm wondering if you could speak about what it was like to read Dee Watkins' book this year for the first time. Um, my experience with reading his book was amazing. It was just very fun. It was very unexpected. Um, you know, all the police, the police brutality was a kind of, it was, it was like an eye opener for me to like see his perspective of it. Not only, you know, being active, actually, meaning what you say and just like just saying it you know so it was very amazing and fun and I just really had a really great time with it and it really it was to the point where I can touch on it myself you know have my own thoughts you know get you know get angry get sad be motivated and everything so yeah it was very fun Love that, Isai. And you also had the chance to meet him, I think not once, but but twice this school year, um, virtually. What was it like to get to actually speak to the author that you were reading? Um, when I spoke to him, it was just like, wow, like if I'm really speaking to the person that I kind of admire now, like it was just like amazing. Like I didn't know how to feel. I just know that I was just, you know, very shocked and happy like it was just like so much fun he just gave me a lot of motivation of what I want to do when I grow up and everything so it was just like completely amazing and I was very honored to meet him and I totally give him his props and everything I respect him a lot love that thank you so much Isaiah congratulations Dee Watkins on this amazing award it is certainly well deserved thank you congrats yay my name is Janaya, I attend Maribel, and I'm in the 11th grade. Dee's writing style when the B-side is uncut, it's raw, and it's real, which is amazing when a reader like me comes across this book. As I was reading, I felt very connected because I also grew up down the hill. I would read certain lines and be like, oh yeah, I saw this happen before, or I experienced it firsthand. Dee being so blunt and real about his story gives me motivation to tell my story. 
knowing that we grew up dealing with the same things and being being able to still make us make something out of himself only makes me feel like I can do the same thing. This book also taught me that you're never alone, especially when it comes down to your personal struggles, such as living in poverty, your skin color, your gender. You can still be great and very successful because those things doesn't define you. Hello, my name is Tamia. Um, I'm a junior at Marble High School, and I just wanted to give a huge shout out to D. Watkins for writing The B-Side. Um, I feel like this book sends a huge message to teens that just because we're surrounded by guns, drugs, and violence, and social media especially doesn't mean that we can't make it in life. I feel like someone like D. Watkins from my city and from around my hood is a truly an inspiration um, because you don't see that a lot nowadays. This book is an awesome book to have in schools because it's a lot of relatable topics that teens in my generation can relate to. Um, it's not things that we get nowadays. And D. Rock, you did an awesome job writing this book. I just wanted to give a huge shout out to you. Thanks. Hello to everybody and a special hello to D. Um, my name is Jeff Lordy. I'm a teacher over at Mervo High School. And um, I just wanted to hop on and just give a couple words of gratitude gratitude for the work that D has done uh, for me and also my students in Baltimore City. Because um, over the last four years, I've taught D's books to my 10th and 11th grade classes at Mervo High School. And each and every time, students have connected and engaged more with his novels than any other novel that I planned for the year. D's words bring the voice of Baltimore to our classrooms, a voice that has mostly been stifled in these settings. His books allow us to engage in deep conversations about our city, the people in it, the structures that run it, and the way in which all these elements impact our lives, our thoughts, and our choices. His books and words inspire my students to think about the role that they will play, not just as students and academics, but as leaders and writers of their own stories. But beyond the actual content and words, Dee's generosity, from donating free books to our classes to giving his valuable time to do question and answers with our students every single year, is beyond measure. It becomes the highlight every year that D comes to visit to talk about life, sports, music, fashion, throw in a few jokes, pop culture, and of course his words about Baltimore City from such an authentic and relatable lens. And in these conversations, D never once talks at students, but actively listens and builds a space where everyone involved can share and learn. He has deeply influenced my own practice as a teacher to give my students the best learning experience that helps develop and support them, not only as students, but as individuals. And I'm forever grateful for that. Congratulations, D, for your awards and your acknowledgements. Continue to do great work for our city and our students. We thank you for it. We appreciate you for it. And we look forward to many more to come. Peace. Awesome. It is always wonderful to hear directly from the mouths of our children and our educators what they experience in the classroom, and what authors resonate in their lives beyond that singular moment. They remain our greatest testimony to how we're doing and whether or not we've reached them. I was in sixth grade before I stumbled upon my first poetry books by Black poets, such as Caroline Rogers, Lucille Clifton, and Nikki Giovanni, and in college when I met Maya Angelou. A child should never have to wait until they're 17 years old to lay eyes and heart on a writer who speaks their language. Dee Watkins answers that call for many. Tonight's honored guest joins the illustrious list of past Dumbach Award winners, Chick Dumbach, Greg Wilhelm, Judy Cooper, and the author who is changing the game in children's literature with an upcoming Disney television series, Kwame Alexander. It didn't take much conversation in the city lit house to determine who the next Dumbach Award winner would be. It was one of those things, who are you when no one's looking? We learned clearly and without a shadow of a doubt who D. Watkins was and the exemplary literary citizen he has turned out to be. It wasn't just the books he wrote, The Beast Side, Living and Dying While Black in America, or The Cook Up, a crack rock memoir. It wasn't just We Speak for Ourselves, a word from Forgotten Black America, the 2021 book Baltimore selection, where 30,000 books ended up in the hands of every seventh and eighth grader in Baltimore City, their families and their communities for a full out community engagement. Though real talk, those three words alone speak volumes of what it means to be Black in urban America. It wasn't just the idea of his forthcoming work, where tomorrows aren't promised, a memoir co-written with Carmelo Anthony, or the idea that G Dee's charged with writing episode three of HBO limited series, We Own the City, 
based on the work of Baltimore journalist Justin Fenton and produced by The Wire's David Simon and George Pelicanos. City Lit chose Dee Watkins because he enters the classroom and takes up the helm of speaking directly to young people. He speaks to them about the power of writing their own stories and empowers them by writing stories that represent them. Who of us can't see the light when we see ourselves in a story meant for us in our eyes and our ears? Dee Watkins does. He's been called the native son of Baltimore. He's the editor at large for Salon. He's published in major publications like the New York Times, The Guardian, Rolling Stone, and has been featured on NBC's Meet the Press, CNN, MSNBC, and NPR. His books have soared on the New York Times bestselling list. He's the founder of Be More Writers Project, where he promotes and supports young scribes. Dee is slated to be a writer in residence this fall at Johns Hopkins University. More than anything though, he understands the investment he's making in declaring Baltimore his home. His charge to be here to make writing and literature a thing with so many of our young is all we need to declare him the winner. Before we hear from our honored guests about staying true to your voice, we get to hear from the National Ambassador of Children's Literature, the renowned Jason Reynolds, who is someone very dear to me, my family from the Rhode Island Writers Colony, and who is a powerhouse himself with three books at once on the New York Times bestseller list. Jason is also a great friend to literary Baltimore and just today received the prestigious Carnegie, Mello, Carnegie Medal for his book, Look Both Ways. Jason didn't hesitate to join us this evening to spotlight Deet Watkins. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the author of Stand for Kids, Long Way Down and Look Both Ways, our very own Jason Reynolds. What's happening, y'all? I'm here, hold on, let me put the camera on because I'm, I'm traveling, hold on a second. All right, I'm, I'm traveling, I, they, they asked me to do this. Carla asked me to do this because she wanted somebody to not lie about D. Watkins, you know what I mean, to, to tell some truth. I'm on my way on vacation. I had to pull over on the side of the road to uh, show my man some love. Really quickly before I get out of here, let me say this. Um, a while ago, maybe a few years back, I called D. Watkins because I had a buddy of mine who was selling a house downtown Baltimore. She had a home on Charles Street. She was selling his house for a decent price. The time I knew that he was looking, so I call him up, hey, bro, this is a good look, it's a good deal. I think you should check out this house. And he didn't, and he refused because he felt like it would take him too far out, outside of where he wanted to be in his community. Um, he wanted to make sure that people always knew that he was there and that he could be touched and he could be seen. And so he turned down the opportunity to buy that house. Uh, and I learned in that moment that um, this is somebody that loves Baltimore. He loves his city. He loves his community in that city. Uh, he loves his family. And, um, and most of all, you love these kids, right? And I think ultimately, no matter how successful one can be, no matter what all the things a person could make, ultimately, the true judgment is your sturdiness of character. And I think ultimately, D. Watkins is a person who is, uh, uh, he is exactly who he says he is, he's exactly who you think he is, um, and more. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, he deserves every award Baltimore has, any, any, every award the country has to offer. But not just being a literary citizen, for representing uh, what it means to be truly uh, an American citizen with all its complexities and all of its um, uh, uh, stick to uh, and all of its honesty, which is so rare these days. Um, I'm blessed to call him a friend. I appreciate you, brother. You're lucky I didn't screenshot and do a share time, a share, a share what do they call it, a screen share of the text message you sent me an hour ago. But that, you know, <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and hold that between us. But ultimately, brother, I love you. I'm proud of you. We proud of you, and you know who the we are. And uh, I continue to root for you, for you, champ. I have to go uh, and continue on with my vacation. But I at least wanted to stop by and say that. Shouts to uh, City Lit. Shouts to Baltimore. Love y'all too. Uh, but most importantly, shouts to you, D. Peace. Thank you so much, Jason. Enjoy. No doubt, Carla. Peace, y'all. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Jason. Our next guest needs no introduction. I'll just say this about my wintergreen sister who also didn't hesitate to join this love fest to celebrate Dee Watkins. Dee, at one point you called her one of your legends. She is indeed the OG of poetry. We love her and we've been loving her since day one when little black girls across the country recited ego tripping and it became a household poem. When we realized it was okay to love everything about ourselves and to speak that love out loud. Ladies and gentlemen, when Nikki Giovanni graces you with her presence, you have arrived. Please give the warmest welcome, I mean, blow up the chat to poet Nikki Giovanni. Is she with oh, us? Thank you. 
I'm so glad to be here. And I'm so glad to, to be a part of honoring Dee Watkins. I think it's so wonderful. I, I uh, also enjoyed watching uh, Jason. I, I haven't seen Jason in a long time, so that was good. I am so glad, Carla, that you invited me to be a part of this. I think that reading is the most important thing that anybody can do. Reading is the most important way that we learn. It's also good, of course, to listen to the old people. I was laughing today, actually, uh, especially for the young men, because young men, young black men particularly, are having a difficult time. And a part of that is because they don't go to the barbershop enough. And I'm not dealing with how they look. I'm saying that you in the old days, when you were my, if you were my age, you know, as the boys went to the barbershop and the girls went to the beauty parlor. So we knew how to conduct ourselves. We knew how to carry on. We knew what was being said and we knew what was right and what was wrong. And I think that these things are in, incredibly, incredibly important. I'm so pleased and I wanted to just give a shout out to, to Watkins, to Dee Watkins, and to thank you for inviting me to be a part of it. Thanks a lot. You take care. You are my winter green sister. You take care. Thank you, Nikki. We appreciate you very much. So Dee, you're on. Oh my God. Like, I'm, I'm so honored. Like, I, I can't believe, you know, um, the two of my biggest inspirations on, on one call. I'm just, I'm lost. I'm, I'm so thankful and I'm so blessed. When I started this, I've never even thought that people who I admire so much would even know my little name. And I'm just, I'm thankful for being here. Um, and I'm so thankful for this, for this award. Um, this is, it's truly a blessing and it's truly an honor. And, you know, to be recognized, um, by people in, in, in my city and who love my city, it just, it means like, it's, it's one of my biggest honors and I'm just, I'm thankful. Um, I want to thank God for this. Um, I want to thank, you know, God makes all things possible. I want, I want to thank my wife and my daughter, two beautiful, beautiful people, beautiful spirits. They, they right here behind me. They always, they always got my front and my back and they inspire me daily. I'm, I'm so thankful for them. Um, I want to thank my manager, my manager Brandy, who, who who puts up with the craziness that goes down in this literary world. She's always been a soldier. Um, I want to thank you, Carla. I, one of my first readings was at City Lit, and that's you know, I, and you know, I sat up there and and and, and I read, and um, I never forget because it was when um, it was when the Baltimore when the City Paper found out they were being bought by the Baltimore Sun, <laughs> and Joe from City Paper had. Um, I read that I read that wild piece and I I never forget that and and definitely Nikki Giovanni who is who has always been a hero to me and an inspiration I'm I'm, I'm so thankful uh, my brother Jason Reynolds who always challenges me to 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 do more and, and to be better and you know when I when we have our little group chat and we joke about the work we put in he's always happy to say work more um, the whole city lit team, um, ER shit for allowing me to come to Morgan and hang out um, and talk to your students and and learn from you. I'm a student of yours too. I'm a student for life. Um, all of the amazing teachers that invite me into these schools. I saw Kerry Graham on the call and Mr. Lordy and just the, the, the thousands and thousands and thousands of Baltimore City Public School students who allowed me in their space. Um, and Mr. Mr. Chick Dimeback for, for this award and for your service and, and just for for providing an example for, for people like me to follow in. I have to work extra hard and make sure I, I, I leave an example for young people to be able to, to take everything to the next level because I think, you know, um, none of us can get there alone, but we all can get there together. Um, my, my favorite is, um, is, is the East African proverb, when spiders unite, they can tie up a lion. And, and that's what it's gonna take for us to, to, to turn this thing around. We're all gonna have to work and push and fight and believe in. And I'm, I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna give a, a 90 minute speech, but I do wanna talk, I, I wanna just touch on the topic that I chose tonight called writing like you, because it's important. Coming out of Baltimore, having a Baltimore accent. Um, there's this story that I joke about with my agent sometimes when when I first, you know, went on my journey to try to get a book deal, someone told her, they said, oh, he's from East Baltimore and he's writing about living in East Baltimore. Why would he, how would he get a deal? He'll be dead before his book comes out. 
they said that what a as a cocktail joke. My life as a cocktail joke, and um, I didn't let it crush me, and I didn't let it discourage me. I just, you know, worked really hard at. Uh, well, I wrote his name down so I could never forget it. But, <laughs> but I worked really hard. And I work really hard at proving those kinds of people wrong because we have amazing people here. We have some of the best storytellers coming out of Baltimore City, and you see them all of the time. Um, really, really, really doing amazing work, and I'm I'm just blessed and honored to be a part of that tradition. And you know, when I heard that guy say that, I, I will say that if there was other people around me at the time who was telling me I would be successful. I would get more opportunities if I wrote like this person, or if I tried to sound like this person, or if I tried to do this, or if I tried to do that. And I can't do that. It's not me. It's who I am. One of the amazing things you said, Carla, is who are you when people aren't looking? And I'm always, I'm always going to be myself. And I think I, I realized the reward in that when um, some years back, when I was first starting out, I lost a friend, um, a, a good friend. Um, he, he got caught up in a bad situation. He was he was murdered, and I knew it happened. Um, I knew when it happened. I went and spent some time with his brother, and we talked about it a lot. And you know, we you know we 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 had one of them situations where we just a powwow where we could just talk about um, the good and 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 how. You know, we're broken in this moment, but we're going to use it to better ourselves. And, you know, I felt that. And then I got a local newspaper and I read a story about his death. And they said a uh, local kid may have been involved in blank, blank, but not proven. Um, had a couple of dirt bikes, murdered the end. And it was so cold. And it made me angry. Because I knew this kid was one of the best dirt bike riders in the history of this country. I knew this kid had deals with Monster and Ithaca and another deal because he was so good at riding dirt bikes. And he had a dream of helping to get a dirt bike park built so that the kids can take them off the streets and they can ride them in Baltimore in a way that is to, to show their beauty. Um, he put on circus acts. His nickname was the No Hands King because he could do anything with no hands, but they just wrote him off as somebody who got killed. And then the tone was as if he deserved it. And it hurt me. And I talked to his brother and his brother was hurt. And I said, you know what? Let me write about him. So we linked up, talked to uh, him, talked to his mom, talked to his brother. I got the family stories. And then I got some of the, um, the impact on, what does it say about a city? where young people ride bikes towards oncoming traffic for fun, right? What does that say? You know, we need to be we need to be looking at some of the bigger issues, but I got a chance to talk about the good he was doing, redemption, how he turned his life around, and where he was hit it before he was taken away. And his mom framed it, and his brothers framed it, and his family framed it, and they loved that piece. And it, and it stuck with them, and it meant so much to them, and it took so little of my time but it was just me giving a piece of myself and being myself, the loving and caring person that I am and having the ability to cover our community or this community with care. And it just meant the world to me. And it, and, and, and it stuck with me. And, and, the, and the other piece to that is that's one of the essays that I've read and talked about on so many school visits in Baltimore because the kids knew who he was. The kids were aware of this case and it made them say, wow, I never thought we could capture our, our, our story and our culture and what we're into um, and our writing, but now we can and we'll do that. So that let me know it worked for the family, it worked for me, and then it worked for the next generation. And that's all I care about. So I'm thankful. Um, thank you to, to everybody for, for showing me love and allowing me to be here. And, you know, I hope and pray I get to uh, being Baltimore doing this work for, I don't know, 50, 100 to 200 years. I don't know how long people live now, but <laughs> I met this guy. He was telling me he was like 112. So hopefully I get to um, do this work until I'm 112 and, and God bless everybody. I'm, I, I can't believe Nikki Giovanni was, was on the come. <laughs> I'm still, I'm starstruck still. <laughs> so great to hear. One second, where we 
to our next video. Hi, my name is Carrie Graham. I just finished teaching my 10th year of high school English in Baltimore City Schools. And for almost all of those 10 years, I have been teaching the essays and articles and books and interviews of Dee Watkins. Every day at the beginning of class, my lovelies, that's what I call my students, start by doing something called independent reading. And so that means every day they come in, pick up a book, read anything they want, 10, 15 minutes. And the idea is that they build stamina with their reading, they develop interest in reading, that sort of thing. So I have this one lovely who every day, we would just fuss about him reading. He was always too hot or he was bored or anything to stop him from reading. He would have his head down. And then when I started teaching the cook up, all of a sudden, sitting up straight, eyes wide, gripping this book. And he says to me, Miss Graham, can I take this home? I want to keep reading. So Dee, thank you so much for sharing your stories. Thank you so much for helping the lovelies learn that they actually do love to read. We really appreciate you. Congratulations. What's up everybody, it's Joshua Waller here, former student of Miss Carrie Graham, Patterson High School, class of 2020. And I'm here to talk about what Dee Watkins and his writing means to me. It all started with this book right here. I don't know if you can see it. I think the camera's backwards, but the B-side. Um, we read this in about 10th or 11th grade, and immediately I fell in love with the book. I felt like I could relate to D. Watkins. You know, we're both from Baltimore, you know. And I kind of feel like he's giving me the voice that I never really had, you know. A lot of these young black men living in Baltimore, they live in the same type of lifestyle D. Watkins used to live. They just have no way of showing it, no way of you know, really getting it out there. But he, in this book, he's putting it into words. All these laws of these young black men, all into words in this book. Hi, my name's Aaliyah Barrows. I'm 21 and I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. And the first time I heard Dee Watkins speak, I was 15 years old. And there's no way to describe to you the feeling that I had when I saw someone who was from where I'm from and struggled the same way I struggled, articulate himself and follow his passions and have them come out as a masterpiece. It's inspiring. It makes you know that you can be whatever you want to be, no matter where you're from or what's holding you down. It's honestly proof that you can make it out the mud. Okay, well, I, um, again, I'm chair of the City Lit Board, and I would like to, just to give you a brief overview of City Lit's progress this past year. Despite unexpected and often overwhelming difficulties, City Lit fearlessly trudged forward to maintain our significant footprint in the literary community. We extended our reach by launching an extensive new website and participating in the International Edgar Allan Poe Festival. We continued to offer studio craft sessions, master classes, and writers live readings in partnership with the Enoch Pratt Free Library. As in past years, we were a partner in One Book Baltimore and a Cave Canem Poetry Celebration. We judged competitions for the Do More Poet Laureate and the Lyric Dream Big Contest. We also mentored young writers for the Baldwin Prize. With an organization called Scribente Maternum, City Lit co-founded a writing retreat focused on mothers who are writers, an issue of particular importance in the midst of a pandemic. In March, we reimagined our annual festival by offering readings and interviews throughout the month. The exceptional lineup included Terrence Hayes, Nikki Finney, George Saunders, Emily St. John Mandel, and Jenny Ophel. Various panels offered insightful discussions about craft, Native American literature, books for children and young adults, and a riveting discussion on the current state of Baltimore City. In another first with the outstanding Gail Danley and Kimberly Lynn, we offered a three series workshop on the joy of grief, finding life in death. This again was a critical exploration of pertinent issues during a year of so much loss. Festival culminated in an amazing visual presentation by some of Baltimore's most captivating filmmakers and poets. 
curated by Nia June, a poet named Nate, and Kirby Griffin. They shared their stories about race, gender, childhood, love, identity, liberation, and self-discovery. In May, we launched another important series called The Invincible Asian American, Telling Our Stories. Through panels, readings, and interviews, it was a virtual celebration of Asian American writers, poets, playwrights, and graphic storytellers, both national and local. All of these events are or will be available on City Lit's YouTube page. Although we've made incredible progress, City Lit spends an inordinate amount of time trying to raise funds to make ends meet. As you can see, we do a lot with a little. Carla, our one staff person, is a powerhouse whose passion for writers never stops. Our work would not be possible without your donations. We're grateful that your support enables us to expand programs, support writers, and keep our events free. If you're able to give an additional amount, we so appreciate it. And you can know it'll be well used to serve the literary community in Baltimore and beyond. Just go to our website, citylitproject.org. We thank you. Carla? Thank you, Dana, thank you. When we look back at the challenging few years it's been for City Lit, we remark again and again, we are here for you. For every reader and writer curious about the world who wants to tap into their humanity. That is why we do literature, to remain connected for a deeper, more meaningful understanding of how we do life. We have a few minutes and usually if we were in a live space, we'd actually be talking and people would be standing up. So I want, can we go to um, the gallery view, Aditya? So if anybody wants to say anything to D Watkins right now, can we kind of like unmute and just kind of um, speak to him directly? Or D, if you have something to say, it might get a little rowdy in here for a minute, but we can do that, can't we? I'm just, my hero, my hero, Nikki came. I can't, I can't believe it. <laughs> that was a good surprise. Y'all, y'all got me on that one. <laughs> but I'm thankful for everybody. I'm thankful for everybody. Like it was truly an honor and, and, and a blessing. I see my good friend Ed Berlin um, and his amazing wife Ann. I like Ann better than I like Ed, but I love Ed and more. There's <laughs> just so many amazing, so many amazing friends. My good friend George and just. Um, and then I didn't know Brandy was here and it's just, um, I'm just to everybody, like I'm, I'm so thankful. Absolutely. We are thankful to have you, Dee. We are thankful to be able to celebrate you in this way. Um, we could not put it off any longer. You know, we kept thinking, okay, we can wait to do this live, but rather than let another year go by without celebrating you, we had to do this virtual. So does anyone else want to say something to Dee? I'm kind of opening it up here. Sharita? Can we have Jeannie? <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know that Dee remembers me. I have met him before, and I am really impressed by what he does with young adults, specifically and particularly young men. I uh, majored in English in college, and I just am so impressed with how he goes above and beyond to be what young adults need. Um, as Nikki Giovanni said, you have to be able to read. Reading is the most important way we learn. And there are children who, because they don't see themselves in what they're reading, they don't read. So I just wanna to say to you, Dee, that I'm gr very grateful that you have given of yourself and allowed young people to see themselves in what you are writing. Thanks. And not even just doing that, but as people have said, you also follow through and go to the schools and talk to the children and just humanize this whole process. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love that, um, hi, Dee, it's Jeannie Howe. Um, sorry, sorry, I'm not on camera. I guess I could be. Um, just want to say I love that also beyond everything you've done that your family is modeling the most amazing behavior in the background, uh, <laughs> reading together, which is like the most fabulous, important thing that you can possibly do with your kids. Uh, we're so, so lucky and honored to have you um, here in Baltimore. So thanks for all you do. 
Thank you, Jeannie. Anyone else? Yeah, I, I yeah. think it's, it's so cool to see what City Lit can do and what D does Thank you. Uh, by, by bringing um, so many different people together. I mean, you've got a bookseller in the crowd. You've got uh, the Greater Baltimore Cultural Alliance. You have Maryland Humanities. Um, oh, goodness. You have educators. You have board members. Um, you have uh, fans. And, and 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 so it is really indicative, and it's and I think why you so deservedly uh, uh, earned this award, D, is you're you're a person that it brings people together. When in, we're in a world that often polarizes people, right, um, with politics, with the pandemic in the last year, and it's just so refreshing and so encouraging to see one of our own hometown. Um, writers and students and product of our schools uh, be, a, be a, a force of unity and not a force of, of polarization. So thanks so much, Dee, for, for all you've done. Thank you. And I, I promise to never go into politics. <laughs> hey, hey, Dee, this is Ed and Ann. Uh, I'm not offended that you like my wife more than me. Um, <laughs> I want to I want to echo what Greg just said that um, you, you're one of the people that brings this city together. Uh, we have a divided city on so many levels, but with people like you at the forefront, you're like our brand. It's one Baltimore. It's uh, individuals all pushing forward. And uh, we just owe you a debt of gratitude. And uh, it's just been an honor knowing you and your lovely family. Uh, just keep it up, man. Just keep it up. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. You've always been supportive and, and, and an inspiration and just an idea person who, who can absorb my ideas. And this is how we're able to make magic. And, you know, we, we got a lot of time to keep pushing it and trying to make it happen. Thank you. And I promise to never go into politics. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate that. D. I hope you are feeling the love in the house tonight. The we have we have weathered many, many storms. For all of you gathered here tonight beneath this virtual roof, we give a resounding thank you. We would not be here without your support. We are immensely thankful for every funder who granted us emergency funding and made it so we survive these dual pandemics. What we are most proud of is that inclusion is part of the fabric of City Lit. We don't need a banner stating our DEI statement because we are that we are that banner of our good work. We don't need a statement because who we are, what we do, and what we stand for is transparent but we thank all of our funders who've supported us through this tumultuous time. And there are really so many to name, but we thank every single one of them. We also would most especially thank a small women owned graphic design company in Ellicott City, Insight 180, especially Wendy Baird and Bethany Howe who designed a boss website in the fall of 2020 when we were going through it. It allowed us to connect with you in bigger ways. To all the individuals who donated $10 and hundreds of dollars, so we can stay whole and deliver. We remain forever thankful. Your faith in us has made it one remarkable year for City Lit. We created a way out of no way with a month long virtual City Lit Festival that George Saunders began to quickly understand what a literary community could look like. Where Nikki Finney, who received a Lifetime Achievement Award, declares City Lit an experience and she is forever changed by her moment with us. We do literature. Your presence tonight makes us believe we aren't that bad at it either. From our heart to yours, with literature paving the way to our humanity, with writers like Dee Watson, a force in Baltimore, imploring our youth engage and pick up the pen and write their own stories, we stay ready for what's next. In the words of Dear Nikki, we prove the human spirit will prevail. We will take what we have to make what we need. Thank you for joining us tonight. Congratulations once again, Dee Watkins. For those who don't know, June 19th has been declared a federal holiday, and in Maryland, it will be observed. Happy Juneteenth. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Please support City Lit. It is so wonderful to see your beautiful faces. Dee Watkins, go and <laughs> just keep doing your great thing. We appreciate you. 
And um, you guys, it's been real. When we go live, it's going to be boss.